Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Grow Roots. Well, it's morning for me. It's a lovely, crisp Saturday morning in fall in mid-November, and I am getting ready to do one of the things that I love the most. I'm going plant shopping this morning to several nurseries who are having their kind of end of season end of season clearance sales. Um, I will be probably stopping first at one of my favorite nurseries and I know the owner personally. <clears throat> it's DNL Nursery in Aubrey slash Pilot Point, kind of in the middle there. And um the owner Joanne Knight or the one that takes care of the nursery, I know her as the owner anyway. <clears throat> she is amazing. So we're gonna stop there. Um I'm not exactly sure if they actually have their plans on clearance, but I have a feeling they do. And then we are gonna hit uh, rooted in in Pilot Point. They specialize in uh, plants that will do amazing in our extreme Texas temperatures, heat, and everything. So most of their plants are Texas natives. Um, they have tested all of their plants, and they're just rock star plants in North Texas. So we're, and they're having a 50% off sale this morning. So I'm excited about that. And then I'm going to go to a uh, nursery that I've never been to before. It's called Shades of Green, and I'm going to go to the Salina location, and uh, they have all of their, they also specialize in, I think, Texas natives, plants that do really, really well here in Texas, and I've heard great things about them. I've just never gone before, and they are having their 30% off sale right now as well, so I'm very excited about that. I will try to, um, film what I can while I'm there. I'm not sure how much I will be able to film, but I definitely will show you the finds and, uh, and what everything looks like when I get home. So come along with me. Here we are at DNL Farm and Home in Pilot Point. Just kind of looking at all of the beautiful pansies. They've got some pine trees over there. Got this beautiful cypress tree growing on the property. Look at that. Oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. They don't have a sale going on today. So I'm just kind of looking around if anything catches my eye. Like, oh my goodness, look at these pansies. The color, the backs of the petals are maroon, but the front is this yellow maroon. I may have to pick some of these up. These pansies are so pretty and they're so unique. This is the IV that I picked up in the springtime that I have in my front containers, and it has done amazing. I just learned that I think it's going to be evergreen as well. So I put them, I made a trellis for them to climb up, and we'll see how those go. But I love these. I may pick up more of that too. Oh, they've got my favorite again, my variegated Vinca Major. I do want some more of this, so I may grab some more of this as well. I've got Creeping Jenny. See, one of the things I set out to do this year was to step up my um, ground cover game. And I'm definitely on my way doing that, but I'd love some ground cover. Here's their clearance table. Looks like their dianthus might be 75% off. And their Japanese sedge crowds. Evercolor Carex. Oh, I may pick this up. This is on my list of plants that I want to try. The Evercolor Carex.
And some chita skins here. Okay. The sweet thing. Oh, you're so precious. One thing that kind of caught my eye over here is this golden Hinoki false cypress. I have one area in my backyard that I really would like to put an evergreen in, but I need it to stay small. And this one gets eight to 10 feet, kind of taller than I wanted, but it is pretty. And look at this, so pretty. Milan cypress, way too tall, 40 to 60 feet. Ooh, what is that sweet little tree? Blue point juniper, yes. Still think that's bigger than I want to get. They are hardy in my zone though, and they're so, so pretty. I love the color of them, but it's just too tall for my garden. Although these caught my eye as well. These are Wilma Goldcrest lemon cypress and they will only get six to eight feet tall and so look at how beautiful that is that's already half maturity i'd say that one and then they have some smaller regular lemon cypress that will get nine feet tall so i'm thinking about that for that backyard spot for sure So here we are at Rooted Inn in Pilot Point. This is literally just a property out in the middle of this farm country here in Pilot Point. It is absolutely gorgeous out here. And yeah, they've got 50% off their perennials and select shrubs and 20% off trees. Mexican bush sage is definitely on my list. I'm just not sure where I would put it, but I may get one of those. <laughs> Ooh, wild bergamot. And this is one I'm thinking of getting too. Variegated society garlic. And regular society garlic. See, I like that. The colors of both of these. Not sure which I would pick up. Purple school cap. Kelly Lofus, Daylily. Let's see what this is. Ooh, lavender cotton. 
I got one of these and it did not do well in the summer. Well, I should say a friend of mine got one for me and it did not do well. I could not keep it alive. Xmenia. So let's see, this one is backwards. Ooh, okay. Ellen's Legacy Rock Rose. Rock Rose is kind of one of the ones that I maybe wanted to try. So, we'll see about that. That's the Dallas Red Montana. Salvia. Autumn Sage. Let's see, this says sale, $8. What is it? Gold Flame Spirea. Hmm. might pick up some lemon ball sedum for sure. Dichondra. I've got some iris. Just yellow. Ooh. This is a type of salvia. What is it? Oh, Mystic Spires. Yes. I had gotten a pink Terps cap from here earlier. It's doing amazing. So if I see another pink one, they don't have any more white. They just have red. They're Christmas trees. Look how cute that is with the farmhouse or the barn behind it. Okay, Green Cloud, Texas Sage. Okay, I may pick up a Texas Sage. Just wanted to show this one. I've never seen this one before. This is like a Texas Sage, but it's called Cimarron and it's petite, only three foot by three foot. And oh my gosh, you guys. It's so soft. They're so cute. This is another variety of Texas Sage called Dragoon Dream that I've never seen before. Also super, super soft. And I love the, the look of it. And I'm starting here at the vines and I just bought a coral honeysuckle at rooted in but this is a pink lemonade and then they have a madame rosy trumpet creeper these little ones they're only $12.99 for the little ones and they have some more tangerine beauty cross vine which I do have some and I would love more for my back fence but that's also where i would put those guys if i ended up with those guys so how cool is that i'm just not sure if these guys are on sale one thing i do love about shades of green is they've got examples of these native perennials actually planted in the landscape and it's beautiful
beautiful. Okay, so here we are in my front yard and I've already planted some of my really great vines. So I'm gonna go through each one and tell you where I got it and the steel that I got on each and every one of them. I'm so proud. So uh, let's first start. I decided to put, I got lemon balsedum. Uh, lemon balsedum is going to be evergreen in zone eight. It is, let's see. You can plant it in the sun, you can plant it in the shade, and it is hardy from zone seven up, I believe, because it is a very heat tolerant plant. It is drought tolerant. It is amazing and it keeps this color all year round. However, my plan is to kind of put it in here a little bit. And right now I've got all of my annuals in there. So um, not exactly sure where to put it if that's where it's going to go it's going to stay in a pot i've hooked it up to drip and so it's just going to be a really cute little like evergreen arrangement i also already had some annual dianthus and some annual pansies that i just bought and picked up so um so those are mixed into that pot as well but into the landscape the first plant is hot trumpets salvia so this is i think it's also called cedar sage if i'm not mistaken there's little tiny buds on it but this is a beautiful red salvia i also love the color of the lime green leaves and the shape of the leaves it's really unique for a salvia and these guys um, bloom from spring through fall they are let's see you can plant them again in sun or shade they prefer well draining soil and they are good in zones seven through ten so this is a perennial not an evergreen but oh look look at this guys you see there are these little baby anole lizards all over my front garden as i was planting these and they are catching flies left and right i've watched a few of them catch flies already it's just a little baby catching a fly thank you bud thanks for taking care of our flies for us I appreciate it okay back to plants okay <laughs> just really excited about this one it's gonna be a nice pop of red which with the background of the sunshine like gushrooms i think red and lime green is gonna look so pretty these get up to 12 inches tall although i think it will get bigger especially right here in this location so we will see about that one uh, the next one is salvia greggy a lot of you have salvia greggy many north texans grow salvia greggy greggy also known as autumn sage i just love the dark pink uh, blooms of this one and it blooms again like spring through fall i'm pretty sure cherry red this one is called mirage by the way um it is a perennial a spring through fall is when it blooms um it says 12 to 14 inches tall although my neighbor has one that's about three feet tall and it's the same variety so i do believe these guys are going to get quite big and again those really dark pink slash red blooms against my sunshine legustrum is going to look just fantastic uh i haven't been saying where i got these okay so coming back to let's see the lemon coral sedum i got for 50 percent off at rooted in and pilot point and these were in very very good condition so uh with the 50 percent off they were six dollars each and i got two of them and then this hot trumpet salvia was at um shades of green in salina i highly recommend it it's the first time that i went there was today and they uh, they have actually a lot more selection than rooted in does but very similar plants the texas natives and all of that so uh, this was 9.99 originally priced but 30 percent off so i think i got this for seven dollars and the same with the salvia greggy 
and the same with this little daylily here but i am so excited about this daylily <laughs> however uh the tag like fell apart on me so the name is here it is <laughs> it is daylily pardon me and you can see the picture here it is going to be a beautiful red slash yellow that's kind of the theme for this back portion that i'm doing in my front garden um these reds and these yellows and chartreuse greens that's going to be awesome but this daylily can be grown in partial shade which it will be for the most part because it's so close to the, sun, the sunshine legustrum um it will be part shade but it's famous for its um just long bloom cycle and it's vigorous uh, profuse blooms so um yeah this was 9.99 on sale 30 percent off at shades of green and it's so it was about seven dollars and truly i could have divided this into quite a few day lilies if i wanted to i didn't want to do that at this time my day lilies that i divided earlier were pretty mad at me when i did that <laughs> and it's fine they, they ended up being fine but i didn't want to do that to this one being a brand new one to me and then also it's kind of getting later in fall and so I didn't really want to put it under too much stress other than the transplant so that's that's um daylily pardon me again at shades of green and then of course I've got another salvia greggy and then over there is another um salia salvia hot trumpets so it's kind of that same theme um you're gonna see you're gonna be like shannon what is going on what is this <laughs> what happened okay so that's my main night salvia that actually used to be all through here and i transplanted it i pulled it apart and broke it up and planted it like all back there there's a line and then it comes this way and it goes around this bird bath and then it goes up here and it goes and I, I have a whole clump of it like right there um the main night salvia did not take to that transplant very well it just really did not appreciate that transplant and breaking the roots up and things because it's been in here for a couple years but i do think it'll be fine um deep down it's it's fine so and the, the soil is moist, so it's just, it's kind of in transplant shock right now. I probably should have cut it back, cut the foliage back before I did that. And that would have been smarter, but I really think it will survive just fine. And last up for the front was just this one. I got this on clearance for 75% off. This is a type of dianthus called Pink's Mountain Frost Pink Twinkle. And I just love kind of this silvery blue foliage with the pink flowers and I really wanted more dianthus because they are some pretty much evergreen in our area um so I planted it here again it will probably go into the landscape at some point but for now I planted it here with other quote-unquote annual dianthus and some pansies that I had as well okay so coming back here is the rest of my find these are the plants that I bought that are actually going to go in my backyard and I'm so excited about every single one of these plants it's oh okay so the first one that we're going to come to is this carex let me oh no where did the thing go okay so this is a carex that i had my eye on first of all it's so like sensory pleasing this grass <laughs> it's not um i don't know it's just pleasing to like run your fingers through it it is carex i believe it is evergreen i think it's the ever willow variety if i'm not mistaken Y'all can correct me if I'm wrong because now I'm just seeing this says Carex one gallon. Now I got this at DNL Farm and Home in Aubrey and it was one of the plants that was on the 75% off table. So I got this and then the pinks dianthus that I just showed you that I put in the front and that was $5 and like 50 cents, including tax, like so crazy, oh my goodness. But I am really excited about this. Again, I'm trying to put more evergreen things in the landscape. That's one of my goals, as well as ground cover this year and filling in holes. So that's what this shopping trip was supposed to do for me. And yeah, so this is Mystic Spires Salvia. If you guys watch uh, Janie from Dig Plant Water Repeat, this is one of her absolute favorite plants. And once I realized that it was hardy in our area, 
I really, really wanted to get it. So yeah, I mean, it's mid to late fall right now. It's still blooming. I do believe it blooms from spring through fall. I think this will get two to three feet tall. I'm not super certain. I didn't look that up. So I'll put on the screen if it's any different. This is a teeny tiny little plant, but I got this at Rooted In in Pilot Point and their perennials are $12 there. Whereas Shades of Green, almost the same exact perennials are $9.99. Same size can, same everything. And also, well, Shades of Green looked better than the Rooted In plants at this point, but Anyway, uh, these were 50% off, whereas Shades of Green was 30% off. So this was $12, so 50% off, I got it for $6. I should have gotten a couple more now that I'm thinking about it. But, you know, I just wanted a little bit of everything. Um, this one I'm going to get back to because it doesn't have a label. And I have to go back to my video. I think this was labeled Caryopsis. I'm going to put the name on the screen if it is different, but I'm pretty sure this was labeled or is it Coryopsis, but um, I'll put the name on the screen for you, but I know that it's, from what I remember, it's like a low growing, well somewhat mounding, like it'll have yellow flowers and this plant looked really healthy. So again, this was at Rooted In. They don't do the best job at um, labeling their plants. That's the only thing. Uh, so oh, there's a lot of plants that just aren't labeled and this was one of them, but it was had a sign on it next to it that said Coryopsis, I'm pretty sure. So there we go. Uh, the next one, and this one I'm really excited about. This is Red Oxalis. I know I've seen Purple Oxalis and maybe it's the same thing. This one is Red Oxalis and it has these beautiful white flowers. It is going to be a shade loving plant. So I will be putting it in the side garden where I have either filtered all sh shade, which is filtered shade, or I also have um, a parts on location I could put it in. Red Oxalis, super excited about that. Again, it's a perennial. Okay, so this one, I told y'all, I've been talking about this plant for quite some time. This is Plumbago serratostigma, and it is a ground cover. It is not the Plumbago annual that you guys are used to at all. This is a perennial ground cover, Plumbago serratostigma. And I was so impressed with it this summer because it bloomed for me in the 110, 115 degree heat, um, all of, I mean, record breaking summer heat and it bloomed all summer long and it did not skip a beat. In fact, it doubled or tripled in size because I got my original one this size and then I couldn't find any more. And I, once I figured out how great it was, I wanted more of them. But here is the one that I have that's planted in the landscape. It's further along in its fall color but you can see it's still <laughs> blooming the leaves turn fall colors so let's see with this one you can't really tell because this one was in a greenhouse so that's why this one looks the way it did this was in a greenhouse at shades of green um i don't know why they were putting their perennials in a greenhouse but maybe just to keep them looking better <laughs> i don't know uh but anyway this is my plumago serratostigma and you can barely see it up, you know because it kind of blends in with the dirt but it's just it's probably triple the size of this one and it was this size when I first got it. So I'm really excited because I originally got this one at Green Acres and I went back to Green Acres looking for more and they did not have them anymore. But to see them at Shades of Green um, and also know that Shades of Green is selling them, which means they're a really hardy plant for Texas, which I already guessed that because it did so well in the summer. So excited about that. Um, these are pink skullcap, so not super crazy amazing right now, but I'll put a picture of pink skullcap on the screen for you. Um, I really kind of was drawn to that, and a lot of people have that in our area. Just really pretty mounding pink flowers, and they're so heat tolerant and drought tolerant. Um, so again, I'm just trying to build up the resistance on my garden for these extremely hot summers that we have been getting and hoping that uh, my garden with those types of plants, it will do really, really well. But that is pink skullcap. Not super sure. I'm just going to be filling in holes here, but it is a full sun plant, I believe, and, and it should do well back here. This, oh my goodness, 
It is a coral honeysuckle vine. This is uh, an herba herbaceous or deciduous vine, so it will lose leaves. But I really wanted to get a honeysuckle. Uh, with the success of my Tangerine Beauty crossvine, I almost wanted to get more of those, but I did see this coral honeysuckle, which has been on my radar for quite some time, and um, whoop, it's just so pretty. I cannot wait. It has these beautiful corally blooms, and I'm going to probably put it back there, climbing along that fence. I've got a jasmine that climbs there, and I also have this, like, muscari grape, wild grape vine that likes to climb there, but I think that might be where I put the coral honeysuckle. I have vines all throughout, but I wanted to put more vines intermixed with the jasmine. I also could, if I had gotten one, two, three of them, then I, I could have planted one, two, three to go in between the Tangerine Beauty cross vines, kind of in between these areas to really fill that out. But uh, I decided against that. I think I'm going to keep this area just all Tangerine Beauty cross vine. I'm so excited about that. But that coral honeysuckle, I think, is going to go right there in that back pocket there and fill in that back hole. And last, oh, no, two more. <laughs> this one is another one that I am so excited about. Look at this fall foliage. Uh, it is in a proven winner's bucket. Do you want to take a guess what it is? It, and again, like it didn't really have a tag. Did I take the one with the tag? I may not have. But I finally found one at Rooted In that had the tag. Because, again, Rooted In is not great for uh, labeling their plants. But I finally found one that had one. And it is... The candy corn spirea. I'm so excited. Um, so candy corn spirea is just a spirea that provides year-round interest. Even though it is deciduous and it will lose its um, its leaves in the winter, it still provides a lot of interest if you leave the blooms on. It blooms, I think, in spring. I'll do a little more research, but I do remember Jenny from Gardening with Creekside. Uh, she talks a lot about candy corn spirea or double play doozy spirea. They had that too, but I decided on this one simply because this is the one that I saw that I really wanted. Um, I was just really excited to see this, and it was 50% off. So it was originally... 40 and so I got it for 20 but it is in this three gallon size so it has a great root system already I have a blank spot back here that's where it's gonna go I have to take out this big dianthus plant though so this this spot right back there I'm gonna take out that dianthus and put it somewhere else because that's a really large dianthus plant that I grew from seed, but that's where the candy corn spirea is gonna go. And then it'll have the uh, dwarf pink Mexican petunia, which will look fabulous with it. I've got that limelight hydrangea. Right now these vinca are gonna go away, but then I've got the jasmine, and then this is the summer carnival hibiscus, which has already defoliated and gone into dormancy from transplanting. It is still alive. Uh, though but that summer carnival hibiscus with the oh my gosh <laughs> now I'm really thinking about it with the candy corn spirea on the other side and the limelight hydrangea um, and then I planted some blue evolvulus down here that I had in some of my front containers um, yeah I'm gonna have to do this backyard garden tour for y'all pretty soon so you can see it but anyway candy corn spirea there we go I digress okay last one that I picked up is Mexican petunia and I really Mexican petunias are pretty popular in my area and especially in my neighborhood and they do they grow really 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 well especially in the heat of the summer <laughs> and they survive our winters really really well um, and they provide really beautiful purple flowers from spring through fall and it provides some height as well because this this is the regular Mexican petunia, and I believe they get three to four feet tall at least. And they also grow, I believe it's sun or part shade. And so I thought it was perfect for this new part shade garden bed that I have back here. I was going to transplant some of these cannas 
all the way back there like you know you see my ac unit kind of maybe in front of that ac unit but i also wanted some mexican petunias to go back there there's a pink turks cat back there and there's also an oak leaf hydrangea back there so can you just imagine the oak leaf hydrangea with the pink turks cap with this beautiful purple mexican petunia and then also maybe can canna lilies that are growing back there in that part sun garden bed so super excited about all of this okay so the mexican petunia i got it shades of green again it was ten dollars 30 percent off so it was seven i don't think i told you this skull cap was from rooted in it was twelve dollars at 50 percent off so it was six uh the coral honeysuckle was at rooted in and it was originally 40 which i thought was actually wait it was originally 48 which i thought was pretty expensive for that but it was 50 percent off so 24 dollars for that vine which is probably a good three feet tall at least and it's got quite a few oh wait it's not just three feet tall look at this wait so this vine goes all the way up here and so it's probably a five foot vine it's a pretty mature vine in a maybe a three gallon two gallon pot so $24 for that was perfect, but I don't think I would have paid $48 for that for sure. And then when I went to Shades of Green, they had a different honeysuckle there. It was just, I think they just called it pink honeysuckle and it was $35. So it was cheaper by $13. It was cheaper, same size. Um, and, but it was 30% off. So I don't know, it would have been would have been about the same probably as what I paid uh 24 ish dollars for this vine and again I could have bought all of the vines they had a lot they had tangerine beauty cross vines as there as well but they were the big ones like this and they were I think 39 at 30 percent off so anyway if you get a chance DNL farm and home uh that's where I got this one on clearance they had a lot of great things there um Rooted in Pilot Point and Shades of Green in Salina. I was happy with all three. All three gave me something different and unique and just super, super happy with today's purchases. Can't wait to get these ones in the ground. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.